Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for November, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. We have six topics today, so let's dig in right away. First, let's talk about Data Connect, our relational database service that is in public preview. Data Connect allows you to create secure and scalable apps with Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL and type-safe mobile and web SDKs. With Data Connect, you can declare your application's data model and the exact queries needed by your application. And we just made it even easier for you to create these queries by integrating Data Connect with Gemini in Firebase. You can now use high-level natural language prompts in Data Connect to generate GraphQL code. All you have to do is open the Firebase console and describe the query or mutation you want to generate in natural language. And Gemini and Firebase will provide you with its GraphQL equivalent. This new feature makes creating GraphQL queries easier, speeds up the development process, and reduces the risk of syntax errors and faulty queries. To learn more, check out this blog post about Gemini in Data Connect. And stay tuned to our YouTube channel because Noe will be covering this topic in the next Release Notes Deep Dive. We also released a new version of the Firebase Genkit for Node.js. If you haven't heard about Genkit yet, it's an open source AI framework that helps you build AI powered apps and agents. And this new Genkit version makes it simpler than ever to build multi agent systems with Gemini. Take a look at this documentation to learn more. One thing to keep in mind, Genkit 0.9 introduces a number of breaking changes. If you have been developing applications with Genkit 0.5, you will need to update your application code when you upgrade to the latest version. We put together this migration guide to help you with this, so definitely check this out. This version also comes with some feature enhancements that improve overall functionality, such as we simplified packaging, all core Genkit functionalities are now in one Genkit package for easier installation and maintenance. We integrated dot prompt, so you don't need an extra plugin to write your dot prompt files. We have multi-turn chat API and stateful chat sessions. We updated flows, now using an SSE-based streaming protocol and a simpler API. And we improved CLI and DevUI with a more intuitive UX. Moving on, let's talk about iOS. With the Firebase Cloud Messaging HTTP v1 API, you can now remotely start, update, or end live activities on iOS devices. Note that you need iOS 16.1 to use live activity and iOS 17.2 to remotely start a live notification. To learn more, see the documentation linked in the comments. Next, let's talk about app hosting our secure serverless framework that provides hosting for server-rendered web apps. When you deploy your web app using app hosting, we create your backend resource in a specific location. When app hosting was first launched, it only had support for backends in US Central 1. We have recently expanded to include Asia East 1 and Europe West 4. You can now choose any of these regions when you create an app hosting backend from the console or using the Firebase CLI. Bringing the data geographically close to your users improves performance and reduces latency. There's one more update to app hosting that I want to share with you, manual rollouts. App hosting's GitHub integration lets you automatically deploy your app whenever you merge changes to your live branch. However, we recognize that sometimes you need more control over your production deployments. For example, you might want to roll out to production only on certain days of the week, or you might want to align your app deployment with other releases or marketing campaigns. So to provide greater flexibility, app hosting now supports manual rollouts. This month, we released a new version of the Firebase Android Bill of Materials with many improvements to Vertex AI in Firebase, Cloud Messaging, Cloud Functions, and Data Connect, as you can see here. We also improved the Firebase Apple SDK a lot with updates to authentication, crash analytics, data connect, messaging, remote config, performance monitoring, and Vertex AI in Firebase. There's also a new major version of the Firebase admin Node.js SDK, version 13. This release dropped support for Node.js 14 and 16. This means that you're now required to use Node.js 18 or higher when deploying the admin SDK. 
Yes, I know that's a lot. And this only happens because we are constantly listening to your feedback on ways to improve our products. So if you have any feedback that you'd like to share with the Firebase team, please do so via our user voice forum. And if you want to check these releases in more detail, take a look at the Firebase release notes page. This and all the other links I mentioned in this episode are available in the description below. And we have one last topic today, Firebase Data Connect queries in mutations. We've released version 13.25 of the Firebase CLI, which includes support for writing queries in mutations and introduces a check directive for advanced authorization, such as storing custom authorization roles in your database. Check out the documentation to learn more. And those were all the updates we had for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Marina, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.